Now you also also mentioned blockchain in passing. I want I mean since you are so immersed in the digital uh, in the digital game, I want your view on the, where this world of blockchain and a derivative of that cryptocurrencies could be headed from here on because one hears just disparate views, some bubbling with enthusiasm about it, some absolutely deriding it and completely skeptical about it. Are you somewhere in the middle or on closer to so, either side of it? You know, our way, they're two different worlds altogether. I don't think the blockchain as a technology originated as the foundation for cryptocurrencies. Uh, however, now it has moved on to say that it can be built into solutions which the IT industry offers. Maybe other people do too. Uh, and we have, for example, used it in the BFFI space, in supply chain, logistics, in our edutech solutions. Whereas cryptocurrency is both, you might say, a platform for trading and an investment. I personally, so obviously I'm very enthused about blockchain per se. That technology has a great future and like all new technologies, you keep finding newer solutions where it can be adapted. Uh, every day we'll receive an inquiry and say we'd like to ensure the security in terms of the historical chain that blockchain provides. But in cryptocurrencies, the way I see it is better left to the financial regulators and the reserve banks of the world. I personally, I mean, I'm uh, wary of it. Uh, I personally wouldn't dabble in it. And yet you don't know. It's become such a large market that you can't ignore it. And I think India itself will have to find its own way of saying how we're going to live within that world. You could uh, choose any one of two extremes where you have China today and uh, suddenly is, uh, disowning it almost and blocking it. And you have America on the left, which continues to embrace it. So let's see the way the world evolves. We'll find out with time. But, but you're also the right person, Ashok, to ask about this huge di digital revolution in India that is playing out in front of our eyes. I mean. You know, these huge digital unicorns, um, a multi-billion dollar listing every other week. What do you make of it? Do you see it as a sustainable trend? Are you circumspect about it? Or do you think it was a long time coming anyway? Well, then this, uh, if you see the phenomenon of the new unicorns, uh, you'll notice that they're all in the B2C space. India with its population over a billion people, hugely growing uh, middle class, and people with disposable incomes, we are bound to be amongst the top three generators of unicorns worldwide. We were late to start, and now we are beginning to accelerate. I don't see that move stopping anywhere. However, what I do feel sad about is I think India needs at least 20 manufacturing unicorns. But maybe that could be a story for another day. Uh, I would also we all know the reasons you know, why you, that has not come about. Yeah. Sure. Let me add to then one other right. aspect of this. As these unicorns continue to enter into the market, it's going to have a huge impact on the size of our capital markets. And they're obviously making their waves there. No, of course they are. Uh, I want to drag it back to the organization of Happiest Minds because other than being a 100% digital uh, company and agile, uh, you also have a unique management model, the formation of an executive board, not one CEO as we are used to. I mean, in this day and age where we are used to celebrity and star CEOs, why did you choose to take that path? Well, you know, uh, this is very much linked with my model of saying I wanted to create an organization in perpetuity. And the main difference is, of course, that the change of the CEO is a, not a one-off event. Uh, every four or five years, one of the members will either move into a different role, chairman, advisory role, and a new member will come on. My own experience, looking at, I could give you hundreds of examples in the world, and it's all pretty well documented that every fourth or fifth CEO invariably turns out to be a disappointment. And in that process, there's a danger that if the founders are not around, uh, they, this could lead you into a negative spiral, because getting out of that, it, it will happen too late. We've seen many cases in India where people obviously didn't have the right CEO, but the founders were able to come in, or the promoter was able to come in and effect the change and avoid that downward spiral. There's also an aspect, and you use that word yourself when you said all these high profile uh, stars. Uh, the economist uses a phrase called the CEO monarchs. They're the new monarchs of today. And I think some things happen in that process which things go down to their heads. Somebody could say that one of the problems in this model would be that decision-making would slow down. 
my own experience with a few years, and it's now about five years since we've had uh, the executive board in place, is decision making is fa and implementation are faster because there's consensus with the leaders. Uh, uh, also, I think our own results speak for themselves. Having said that, how well it will fulfill the objectives of perpetuity, I think will be something which will obviously be known uh, many, many years after I'm not around. Uh, but I do believe that conceptually, it's a model which should be able to survive, succeed, and flourish.